You are listening to New Theory Radio. Welcome to another edition of New Theory Radio here live on News Talk Saga 960 AM. My name is Nav Nanwa. I am your host, and this is a show where we theorize on all things current affairs, pop culture, and everyday life. Thank you so much for joining me on this Sunday evening or early evening or late afternoon, whatever you want to call it. It's a very special edition of New Theory Radio this week. Uh, we are going to be doing a special photography episode. I got a lot of homies kind of in my inner circle that do uh, that do amazing things when it comes to work behind behind the lens and I thought it'd be great to just dedicate an episode to that and really talk to them about the scene uh, as a whole and then to really theorize on a few of the topics. One topic in, in particular is the uh, popularity around street photography. A lot of people on Instagram, a lot of people in some of the more popular galleries, you're seeing a lot more portraits, a lot more scenic shots, a lot more um, elements that are being displayed based on the places where people live and I'd love to get, uh, uh, I'd love to get my three guests to chime in on that as well. Uh, uh, we're also going to be talking about uh, photography gear. And when I, when I talk about photography gear, it's not just, uh, you know, your usual camera or your tripod, but some people out there actually just use an iPhone to take really amazing photos. And I want to get all three of their perspectives on that and to, and to really, uh, you know, lean in a bit and, and get their thoughts on people that, you know, use an iPhone to make things happen or use other nefarious means to make their photos happen. Because I know uh, in the industry of photography, um, it can be, it can be very specific on the technique and and for some people that can uh, really get a good shot it'd be, it'd be interesting to see uh what really goes into that and what it actually means to them and then uh you know we're going to switch gears a little bit and we're going to continue the conversation but look at it from more of a business slash hobby standpoint um at, you know the photography industry as a whole is a very cluttered industry there's a lot of photographers out there that are uh, making a living doing different types of photography whether it's wedding photography event photography music photography and then there's some people that are really amazing but they only do it just out of passion and out of hobby so i thought i'd get all three of my guests to chime in on that and to provide some perspective regarding what it means to do it for a business purpose versus doing it as a hobby and has both of those uh, both those areas ever intersected with each other or have they ever conflicted with each other depending on uh, what you're trying to shoot and uh, before I go to commercial break I think it's only fitting to announce who my guests are because I totally forgot about that I got in the building uh, I got my boy Flash Richards as well as uh, Strictly Steel two amazing creatives and then I also have joining us uh, an amazing photographer as well as the producer of the New Theory Radio theme song he's no stranger to the show he's been on numerous times and that is my homie Dusty Loops when we get back we're going to start talking about what it means to be a photographer in this day and age here on News Talk Saga 960. You are listening to New Theory Radio. We'll be right back. And we are back here on New Theory Radio on News Talk Saga 960 AM. My name is Nav Nanwa. I am your host. And this is the show where we theorize on all things current affairs, pop culture, and everyday life. And it's about that time that we start theorizing here on the show. And like I mentioned in the intro, this is a special photography edition of New Theory Radio um, coming coming over the air on radio, which is kind of hilarious, a photography episode on radio. But hey, we definitely make it work. Uh, and yeah, this this episode really came about because of a lot of people in my network that are really good friends of mine that... Um, are photographers and do an amazing job and really putting their craft out there and you know a lot of this really stemmed from sidebar conversations or just things like you know appear on whatsapp or even just when i see these people out in the open uh, about the industry as a whole and just just interesting conversations there's a couple people in this room that you know really just picked up photography as a hobby just because they um, were very passionate about it some people have been doing it for a very long time so i thought it'd be great to just focus on photography as a whole because it seems that in this day and age specifically with social media um, everyone can sort of become a photographer but it really depends on if you're good or not so we are going to kick things off and i want to introduce my guest we're doing a bit of a round table i got first joining me he's rocking the uh the toronto alternate city jersey <laughs> okay. looks like this guy bought it like right away as soon as it went no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, for this. And, and he's, he's a dude that i've actually uh it's funny flash like you were one guy that i remember when i first met dusty that was doing photography of him like years ago and then uh you kind of like 
like not you didn't like disappear but you kind of focus on other things and you came back into it and you've just been crushing it and the one thing I'll say is uh, my promotional photo has has been taken by you so (laughs) I use that a lot in my promo for a lot of my stuff but it's my boy Flash Richards he's in the building yeah what's up Flash what's going on I'm just here (laughs) (laughs) waiting on an invoice (laughs) (laughs) he definitely is he definitely is I I gotta you gotta address that properly (laughs) and then uh, sitting across from him is my boy uh, No Stranger New Theory Radio he's actually a teacher but he's a uh, all-around creative uh he's somebody who uh i think the last time i had you on strike I, I, I said that you were like a guy that's like ahead of its time when it came to like the grime music scene and the popularity mm-hmm. because you were doing that in like 2010 yeah and now everyone is trying to do that now in every sort of part of the world and uh you know i think it's time for you to get your flowers but you're also a really amazing photographer i actually had the ability to showcase some of your work at one of my events previously and so that's my boy strictly steel strict thanks much for joining us thank you man it's nice being back yeah this is actually it's interesting having you on because i think we're gonna be talking about uh, when we had you on last time, we were talking about the the, the teacher strike. Yeah, yeah, we were talking about like a, a, a whole bunch of things. Yeah, uh, mostly related to education. Though. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because I had a lot of people hit me up about that episode, being like, "Yo, like that was a deep episode. Like they loved your perspective." And we had my boy Ali Taib on yes. the show too, and it just got super deep about the education system in Ontario and just how it's. There's, it's against a lot of odds, man. Yeah. Yeah. But we won't get into it on this episode. Don't <laughs> worry. We won't go that deep. And then last but not least, like I said, I got the producer of the new Theory Radio theme song. He just has a new album. Well, new album. Been out for a couple a couple of months and it's still rocking. It's one of the best releases of 2019. Uh-huh. Uh, he's also an amazing <laughs> photographer behind the lens and all around creative. And uh, so happy to have him finally in studio here in Saga 960. Another previous guest on the uh, original edition of New Theory Radio. And now he's here to bless the mic one more time. It is my home way. Dusty Loops is in the building. Dusty, what's up, man? Doing great, man. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I can't be all serious. I can't, I can't like the hype is intro. He's like, hey, what's yeah, going on? <laughs> I gotta be cool for like five minutes, then I'll let you loose. And they just, and they just like, like lean in. Time. They just like lean in. Whatever, man. I appreciate what, my it. Third time, I think. Yeah. Yeah, who, me or Dusty? Close. Oh, okay, Dusty, you gotta talk closer to the mic. Shout out to Jyoti Bunny. She's back from Cuba. She's back to producing the show. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has like a nice glow right now too. Um, but yeah, no, it's good to have you back, man. It's, uh, yeah, we had you on a couple times and uh, you know what? It, it, for me, this isn't going to be a fun episode because um, I've had the opportunity of going on these things that you guys like to call like photo walks where like you guys get together in a group and um, you shoot not just within sort of Toronto but all over the place and you get different perspectives on different objects or people or locations and it always makes for like a unique experience and it's one of my favorite things to sort of creep on when i when i see you guys on the on instagram is just who can get the various shots and our very own colorblind photography the official photographer new theory radio uh, big up. Uh, yeah, big, yeah big up he's, he's also the executive producer of this week's episode he, yeah. he, he pretty much chose all the topics um he i know he's a big part of it too i know that's where he kind of got his start so it's good to kind of see some talent get fostered in but before we kind of get into that i'd love to understand like how did you guys get into photography because I think um, like I mentioned earlier with the iPhone and social media it's very easy nowadays for someone to be like oh I'm a shooter I'm a photographer now but um, all three of you have a specific craft you guys have definitely uh, with the photo walks are working on it on a consistent basis and uh, Flash because you were one of the first photographers that, that I you know sort of knew in this vein when I first met Dusty I'd love to kind of get your, your stance man how did you get into this? Uh, photography for me started when I was very young, actually, my dad oh, was always into photography mm. and he had this Canon camera with a bunch of lenses in his closet way up at the top. Like really? so, But he would never let anybody touch it because I didn't, you know, <laughs> try to... Uh, uh, photography and the the gear is very expensive so uh he he just kept it up there so out of my reach and then one time i was rummaging rummaging through his uh his stuff and i was like oh look at this camera (laughs) and then um it was like like glowing wasn't it yeah yeah i was always playing with it and then he'd all i would always get in trouble every time i took it down and then he would tell me put it back and i'll be like okay whatever wait till you're gone (laughs) um but it it kind of like at that point in time, I didn't know about photography. Obviously, I was like six, seven years old, and I was just like, "Okay, this is a cool gadget." And then as I got older, I was like, "Okay, I 
I saw what a camera was. I know what a camera was, and then I just got a point and shoot. It was I remember it was an HP camera. It was an HP <laughs> point and shoot. Wow. And yeah, it was like <laughs> HP. Like what the heck is that? And so uh, I used that for a good year, and then I gave it to my brother, and he and then he destroyed it one time. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm not getting that one back. And then after that, brothers typically do that. Yeah, they they, they, they destroy things. And then after <laughs> that, I was I was in a lull for a moment, and then. For some odd reason, I decided to get a Sony camera as my first camera. Ooh, <laughs> and we'll probably get to gear later. I don't, I don't know. Like as someone who never who's never bought a camera, yeah. Like I don't know. Like to me, a Sony camera is like, oh, that's a, that's pretty sick. But yeah. like it'd be good to kind of get a sense of like what like good gear actually is. But, but yeah. yeah, back then it was it was fine. It was what what I could afford. Yeah. So <laughs> I and I then Flash I, was always very tech savvy. Like he was the first one to get the Walkmans in our school. The, oh, yeah, we, yeah, I just sent him a mini disc the player. Mini- it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's on Amazon for twelve hundred, <laughs> and I remember he had a specific one. So even camera wise, I remember it was the first guy around us that came with something. Oh, that's awesome, man! Yeah, F- Flash was the like the tech plug. I was I was always on the tech scene, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved it. Was that so? With that HP camera, was that a digital camera? It was like I had a digi- a small digital back yeah, on it, yeah, and yeah. it was literally got it because I got it with the printer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's honest. He's like, honest. I'm not going to lie. That was it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, that's the one. And then from there, I, after we graduated from school, he was doing his art. And then I was just in the back scenes taking pictures. And it just started rolling from there. Yeah. 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 No, we that's shot cool, our man. first uh, demo cover. Oh, did he? With uh, Scotty IV. Oh. We were at Mac. Uh, so was that? It wasn't previous and unheard. That was uh, no. It's called the sampler. Yeah, the sampler. Yeah, I so that, that was shot by him. Oh, crazy! Yeah, all man. those images of Wong uh, spooks at the time. Yeah, were all yeah. By him. yeah. Scotty Ivy, another previous guest on New Three Radio. It all connects. It all connects. When did you realize that you had a talent for it? Like when you were like, you know what? These shots are pretty good. And like, when did people start to recognize, man? Like Flash. Like these photos are are nice. I honestly, I just I shoot. I don't. I, didn't, I haven't actually recognized it. There was no specific point I recognized what, if I was good or not. It was just I liked this photo and I liked how it looked. Yeah. And from there, I would, I would show like my friends or my family, um, and they were like, "Oh, this is a nice, cool. That's a cool shot." And then from there, it just kept stemming and stemming. I just started. I can literally remember the times in my room. I'd be sitting in my room trying to figure out what else I can um, photograph. Yeah. And different ways I can photograph it. Yeah. And then. I would use myself as a model and then I just have the <laughs> timer on. I'd like run over there to the side. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pose. And then I'd run back and I'd check it out and I'd like, forget this. I have to do this again. Uh, and it was just... Check the was, selfie game, bro. Yeah, it, it, was, it was just trial and error until I, said, until I said, this is what I like. And this is the aesthetic I wanted or yeah. this is what I wanted to see. Yeah. That was pretty much it. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Dusty, you... Uh, like, I... Actually, it's funny, man. I had no idea because, like, when I first met you in 2008, um, you were, like, a... You were definitely a visual artist. I remember seeing a lot of your graffiti work, seeing a lot of your canvases, and then you obviously you made music. And then it wasn't until, like, I think you and I went to South by Southwest when I realized that you had a real like talent for photography. And then I remember I was talking to your brother about it and your brother was saying, no, he was doing this like in high school too. Um, so when did you get introduced to photography? Because I don't, I don't think a lot of people know about your start and they see your Instagram, they see all the amazing shots, but they've been, they probably don't know the backstory behind them. I think similar to like, uh, like how Flash was saying, photography wasn't a thing back in the day that was championed right yeah, yeah. it was just something that people did we all knew about like that one uncle at the party that had the big camera <laughs> he was taking everybody's picture and you yeah. never got to see the pictures <laughs> right they all just disappeared you know, in the abyss yeah so <laughs> same with us too like my dad would have a camera i remember just shooting the roles or they would shoot the roles yeah and we would never get them developed oh wow so it was just an activity that just to kind of like pass the time at a party yeah so it was always around but coming back to that south by thing um it was actually that trip that i had in south uh south of france yeah with young guru right yeah. because i saw him like uh w- after we would finish all the music stuff he had a leica and he was doing photography on the side oh nice and for me like yeah I've, uh, you know i've dabbled in multiple different creative lanes but i've never done them like simultaneously mm. it was always like okay just put all your efforts into one yeah. and then move on and do the other one never at the same time so when i saw him doing that that kind of like opened that channel for me so i was like okay if i can 
you know, if I'm serious about this, if he can do it, most likely I can do it too. And I remember like when I was shooting it too, uh, he was just he would kind of encourage me and say like you know you have a natural eye for it you're shooting it off your phone mm-hmm. you know your, about your composition which I guess it comes from my art side it's it, once you know how to do compositions it, you can kind of carry that over t- into any medium yeah. so from there I kind of you know I I kind of explored it through my phone for three months and I you know I, I said okay if I can do this consistently and I'm getting the results I want then I'll invest into a smaller compact camera which I did which uh, you know unfortunately my first camera was a Sony <laughs> I'm kidding I'm kidding. Sony I'm hey, kidding man. it was a Sony RX100 one, uh, uh, Mark IV so <laughs> sorry I haven't <laughs> I'm, a, I'm like pretending Sorry, yeah, that's I, an like, inside joke it's an inside oh, joke okay. yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> we rag on each other's gear but you know at the end of the day the gear doesn't matter yeah. right yeah. so uh, yeah so I, I, I shot with the compact camera uh, for a whole year and my goal was if I'm consistent with this yeah. and I'm able to push the limits of this small uh, compact camera to you know because a lot of people are approaching me that had the same camera too and were like what, what are you shooting with because I'm not getting the same results out of my camera so that kind of it kind of like I was kind of proving it to myself that okay I can push this further and it's funny because after that the first camera I invested in fully was uh, your bachelor party oh really yeah so when we went to New York I yeah. was like okay I can kind of do two things I was actually two months early to me purchasing the camera yeah. for my birthday but yeah. after you said hey we're gonna go to New York I'm like yeah I might as well pull the trigger now yeah. so you remember the shots that yeah, came out the when shots we were in out New York there? were crazy man yeah so yeah. That, that was pretty much like the I think my first professional camera that I I got just to kind of get into nice. it fully. Yeah, that's dope, man. And then Strick, you uh, again just like Flash and Dusty, you do a lot sort of on the side. How did how did you get into photography? Because I I had no idea that you were into it until I I saw you pop up with Dusty a few times uh, at some of the photo walks. Then again, we displayed two of your pieces at uh, at Meta Brampton last year, uh, which were uh, fantastic, man. I remember Thank you. I remember just being really moved by a couple of them too. So, how did you kind of get get d- dip your toe in photography? Yeah, game? Um, <laughs> again, it's just one of those things that photography it was around, but it wasn't really something that you pursued it was just like there's always someone taking yeah, pictures there's yeah. always like the photo album and um again kind of like flash i got a printer when i went to school and my mom copped it me came with a, a free camera like a just a canon point and shoot yeah yeah and especially because when i moved out here a lot of my cousins were asking about what's life like in canada so i'd be taking pictures of everything like even though I, I couldn't get the shots that I wanted, I would just still take pictures and I would be sharing that online or yeah. like sharing it in emails and like, hey, this is what's going on in Toronto. This is what's happening in Brampton. <laughs> this, is, this is like all the house parties. I was a dude with a digital camera just like taking pictures <laughs> and then everyone messaged me in the morning like, hey, don't put that online. My mom's on Facebook. So I always had, I always had a camera with me. Like yeah. I always had a camera. Um, first professional camera I got was actually a... Uh, a Canon AE1, which is an, a vintage uh, film camera. Nice. And man. I got that just to just to practice. It was cheap at the time, and yeah. this was before like film exploded. So I remember I got the camera for thirty dollars, but the lady was in Newmarket. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm not going out to Newmarket. This is when I was still student <laughs> life. I'm like, I'm not going out there. It's I wasn't a little driving. Far, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Like I was very naive. She's yeah. like, Hey, I can actually send you the camera if you PayPal me the money. I was like, this is Kijiji. <laughs> I don't know if this should be trusted, but I did it anyway. I'm a little scared. And, a little um, scared. Yeah, very trustworthy. She sent the camera like $30 later, and yeah. I just bought film on um, on eBay, and then I found like film stores, and then you realize that there's like a whole community that we're doing yeah. film. And I was um, using a lot of online resources at the time because I didn't really have access to many books. So um, like Flickr at the time was like really Oh, Flickr really was popular. huge. I remember that. And yeah. I used to go to the forums there and just like search up how to fix things yeah and it was cool because it was all mechanical so i was able to like break it down and like clean it and i i, I still have that camera now like I, I bring it out sometimes and i learned a lot of the foundational skills from that um and then once my mom saw like oh like he really likes his photography stuff then um for christmas one year she got me a canon rebel which is like a starter starter camera sweet um, and from that, I just like took it everywhere. I even tried a little dabbling video and stuff like that. But photography was the main thing that I, I focused on. And 
again it was just like a lot of trial and error like i didn't i didn't read the instruction manual <laughs> i was i was literally just like going around and just pressing random shots. buttons yeah just like, like just pl- playing just, with the white balance exactly like, no and idea. especially after having a film camera as well like, i kind of knew the foundational skills of what it yeah to take a good photo and then from that just um more exposure to different environments so before i was just taking pictures of like my surroundings and then taking pictures of people and yeah. just trying to take pictures of my experience of especially being somewhere where most of my family aren't trying to like just give them an idea of what life was like here that's so, cool man yeah that's really cool i find it interesting with all three of you how you all three of you had this like childhood or, or adolescence trial and error moment with a camera like i think back to like first time i ever seen like a video camera that my parents had bought and you pick it up and like you think it's the coolest thing ever when you're making a video or even now like like my niece has a a fuji film instax camera nice. right that like she's just enamored with like she just loves like taking photos from it and like it's it's cool to see um that experimentation because you never know where that could lead and mm-hmm. i think with all three of your stories it obviously led to you guys wanting to continue that that sort of creativity as well and and i think that's great that you had sort of environments that fostered it because i i I think um you know someone's not good at drawing or or good at singing like i think having a camera or a video camera can still be a suitable creative outlet for somebody who just wants to get something out there right um one thing i find with all three of you uh is uh, obviously with these photo walks that you guys go on um is just the the power or the creativity around street photography like all three of you guys are are very much deep into it um it seems that nowadays like a lot of people are are intrigued by sort of street photography catching people in their elements um trying to depict sort of areas for other people what like how would you describe your your interest in street photography and and why do you guys sort of choose that as being um one of the ways to kind of feed that hunger from a creativity standpoint maybe flash will begin with you okay (laughs) (laughs) i told you man you're right in front of me you're gonna be the first guy (laughs) you actually took the spot (laughs) um to be honest uh it's it's so natural. Yeah. It's just the naturalness of uh, there's. You don't have to set up anything, really. It's ready set up. It's ready mm. there. You don't have. It's it's just looking for that moment to happen. Really, uh, lo- photography is a lot of waiting. It's a lot of just. I'm gonna. It, it could it can be it can be fast but at the same time it's a lot of waiting yeah so you're waiting for the right time waiting for the right, right light waiting for the right moment yeah um so it's it's for me uh, street photography like i said it's it's very natural it's 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 uh the people are doing things that you you've never seen and you're capturing that moment mm. and then you're letting other people see it and I, it's probably gonna. I, I don't want to say too much about it because it's gonna go into another thing that you want to talk about. So, and <laughs> whatever, like, man. Okay, yeah, yeah. Fabric, <laughs> fabricating uh, uh, scenes, or like they're just waiting for that perfect scene so that they can get this and then post it right oh, away. Yeah, you're calling out influencers yeah. right now, bro? <laughs> so which is cool too, right? There's yeah. an art to everything. There you is. still have to understand composition. You still have to understand lighting. Yeah. When you get yeah. into the true essence of street photography, it's like the perfect match of, uh, you know, preparation meeting luck yeah right yeah. so and also you have to know your camera mm. you, you can't just go out there and start shooting you can you can easily just set everything to auto yeah and then just shoot but it doesn't come out the same because yeah. then you you're missing out on the light that you the certain type of light that's there because if i throw auto on and everything uh and go outside it will perfectly light the area to where it is it won't match what i'm looking at yeah it won't match it like okay it's, it's actually nighttime or it's actually you know the sun's the sun is setting yeah, so yeah the dials and how to use those dials is very important hence why i use the fuji send the checks send the checks oh my god I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna send the show to a couple companies uh, <laughs> Dusty what about you man like again I think back to the times that we, we've hung out gone on trips together um, you know there's times where like you know you just bring out the camera and you find a shot and you take it and then like we you see it in post and like it's amazing and there's a couple shots even on your re- on your page recently like I think what the wheelchair shot that you just yeah. had which is crazy like I don't even know how you took that shot and I urge you guys to check it out at Dusty Loops on Instagram it's fantastic composition he will tell you <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I've, you know what it, it's so funny because were you like at a balcony just like scoping no that's <laughs> it, that is the perfect example of being prepared and finding luck 
right? Mm. Prior to that shot, we probably took three, four hundred shots. Yeah, yeah. So it's all leading up to that, right? So that's how like a lot of our photo walks are. When we're shooting, you know, people think like, oh, if you shot two hundred shots today, you, you know, they're all postable or whatever yeah it doesn't yeah. work like that sometimes you have to go through two three four hundred shots just to get to that one yeah that speaks like which is the same similar ratio like uh, with film too right like i heard this quote that if you shoot film and out of a roll of 32 or 36 if you're able to get at least one good shot out of 36 uh, uh shots it's a pretty good day mm. right which mm. for us it might be like oh that's a waste or not but when you really look at it from retrospect it makes sense right that's why that wheelchair shot is a lot more i would say more uh captivating and it feels more powerful than just like building shot yeah right which is fine because i just posted a building shot too right <laughs> but there's a, a place and time for everything yeah no and, and that like that's a powerful shot i, I think back to the, the some of the photos you took when you're in france i think there's one where a waiter's just going out for a smoke yeah and it's just the way you profiled it was was awesome because it made you think about hey like how's this guy's day going like how like what drove him to smoke it was, and, and that's for the years. beauty about street photography because it's left to your interpretation I, did, I i think some of my best shots are the ones that i post absolutely nothing about them and yeah. i just i just post them online and i just see people having their own conversations about it and i can't recreate that the funny thing about that shot is that's the only one shot i took oh, yeah. and i don't re recall taking it either wow i just Crazy. remember sitting i remember seeing someone in a thing and maybe out of fear i just shot it and put the camera down yeah yeah because you know out there the laws are different for street photography and they will tell you to delete the camera or call the police oh, right? really? it's yeah. not the same over yeah. here we, we have a lot more freedom out here in north america so with that shot and the shot with the bottle you know which is it, it took me there's thousands of shots that I shot uh, during that two week trip yeah. that led to those three four shots which are now to me at least pretty timeless yeah yeah well, when it comes to actually that, that's a good point you bring up when it comes to the sort of perm the permission that exists like have you guys ever been in a situation where you've taken a <laughs> oh, shot and someone's been like multiple, multiple, it multiple it times man. Really? Like, like I remember when I was starting off in, in Toronto um on the subway yeah. like just going to subway stations apparently you're not allowed to take photos in the station but <laughs> I didn't know that <laughs> yeah apparently apparently yeah, you but can't. Like, most stations you can't you can't what but the yeah. conductor off the train stop the train really? and then oh. started like shouting us but the, the thing is especially when you're doing street photography especially in Toronto is I don't know it's like this weird binary of like people come here for the culture right people come to Toronto for, yeah. for the aspects of oh, there's so much happening it's it's the place to be right now creatively but when people are creating they hate it because it gets them out of their comfort zone so mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. me and Dusty and um, our model the ch our shout our out Harpreet model, Harpreet, hey, Harpreet. Um, we were just shooting and what we like to do is like go after beat and pass so we'll like go on a main street and then maybe go down the side like um, in Toronto if you've never been there there's like a lot of like laneway houses and things like that so we'll go around there try to get some graffiti try to get some um, architecture I was taking a picture of like this really dope silhouette of this building and the guy comes out and he's like hey what are you doing I'm like I'm oh, just taking a picture of the from building from his balcony yeah too. from his balcony wow I'm like, really yeah. I'm like oh I'm just taking a picture and he's like why I was like because I live here and I'm just documenting yeah. stuff he's like wow we don't like it <laughs> move on and then yeah. it's, just, it's just like stuff like that exact right? words yeah, yeah, so yeah we don't want you taking pictures of our building which yeah. I never heard because I was on the other side but, shooting but there's other people living in that building though right? yeah but he's the only one that had an issue with it wow but it you know I've, I've faced that even when I was working with the city of Toronto doing the murals yeah. you know these are commissioned murals that I'm painting with the community yeah. and somebody would come and I remember my favorite moment was uh, me and Wong painting this bridge and this Russian lady walked by and she just like I looked at her like said hi and she looked at me and she's like go back to Jamaica <laughs> and I just it was such a funny Dusty thing dreads. like bro <laughs> I could not stop laughing because it's like yo this is so bad but also you're so wrong for uh, saying that you have no I, I, do, I do miss your dread phase man your dread know, phase man. was awesome it was heavy it was, heavy. <laughs> it was, a, it was a different life it was, it was like the just boys phase you know <laughs> 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 but 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 even with that when we were doing commission work we would have random people come up there's some people that are just intrigued and they want to know more so they'll ask you questions yeah. and they don't mind it right because yeah. they might have a nephew or a son or somebody that wants to get into it but then there's just some people who don't know any better or they're just miserable and they're just going to say something and you know go about their business and I let them whatever yeah. that's their 
yeah. win for the day. Good for them. Well, especially because if you go like downtown Toronto, downtown Brampton, even in Mississauga, like you go to poor credit. Like I was poor credit a couple weeks ago. Like there's people walking around with their cameras, just yeah. shooting everything. And I think nowadays when it comes to Again, the social media generation, uh, to your point, I think so, some people are more open to it, but then you'll have a couple of rotten apples that are just not in favor or kind of like paranoid as to where these photos are going to end up. Yeah. And um, I don't know, like I love the point you brought up, Strick, about sort of Toronto being this epicenter of culture because I find that people are so crazy about, um, you know, Instagram photos, clout. Like if, if they see a photographer, like, oh, yeah, definitely take my photo and, like, send mm-hmm. it to me. I love to post it. And then sometimes when they post it, they edit it. <laughs> or they, the, the funniest one is, like, that's inevitable. <laughs> the funniest yeah. part is, like, when we're shooting, feel like, we'll do our photo days and we'll all bring film cameras. Like, hey, man, show me that picture. Oh, and, like, <laughs> can't see this yet. It's not yeah. developed. So it's, like, that, <laughs> that insane gratitude that they want of, like, seeing themselves. Yeah. Like it, and then that's the thing with photography that is... Some people would say, especially with phones and stuff, it, it's just like very quick. You're not you're not in the moment. But I feel as if it actually slows me down a lot. Because as Flash said, you, you're waiting. It's a lot of patience. Like mm. you'll see. And if you look at any great photographer, if you look at any magazine shoot over the past year, 50 years, you're going to see the contact sheet that has like 100 plus photos. And they're not great. Mm. And you're going to see like the, the five photos that really stood out. And those are the ones that got published. Yeah. So it, it does take a lot of patience. And... I think that's the thing that um, it it makes us appreciate things a lot more because yeah. you're you're living in the moment, you're slowing down, you're taking your surroundings, and you're always thinking like a few minutes ahead of what actually is going to happen. So mm-hmm. we usually like with our photo walks or you know anytime we link up, we catalog certain areas because yeah. we know the type of light that we'll get there in the morning compared oh, to the noon or four. So we'll keep coming back to that, right? Yeah. And with the season changing, like it provides a completely different dyna- dynamic every time yeah so and I actually picked that up from uh, there's a magnum photographer who has uh, like you're saying with the contact sheets he has this area that he would go to where the train passes mm. and he had the shot of I want the train passing with this person walking right underneath it so he would go there every couple of weeks at noon and just wait and just wait for that to happen Crazy. and it took him like you know a couple of weeks couple months or so yeah and it happened he finally got it right yeah. so it is something like you know that's one idea that he has you know stacked up with other ones that we're constantly working on so yeah. that yeah uh, it makes it it makes it more fun and yeah. this the yeah. city is also changing like rapidly too yeah. right so like shots that we would take last year y- you go to that area now the building's not there anymore wow. so you kind of yeah. like document in yeah. a lot of stuff that that's are changing crazy. in the city so that, that's the fascinating part about what you guys do too and and that's probably a good segue to my next question is just um why street photography like what like why is it like do you guys ever think about you know like have you guys ever done stage photos before like it's street photography because it's raw and it's real it's, it's like hip hop man it's yeah. like it's just it's, <laughs> it, it, you're just documenting what you see like yeah. there's very little you're doing to alter the situation yeah and especially like when you're shooting black and white too like yeah. a lot of us shoot in black and white you're able to see just there you're able to see what's in front of you and, and yeah and as, as Dusty was saying like you sometimes you just have to leave it up to the audience to to try and create a story of what's happening yeah yeah it's, it's quite it's quite the archive right because to your point like you think about classic photos that you've seen of toronto or brampton or wherever that have taken place in the 50s and 60s and 70s chances are like those photos weren't taken by big time publications those photos were taken by those generations of street photographers yeah. right the ones that just brought the camera out and just started shooting so i like the i like the documentarian factor of it because to your point like the city is rapidly changing that you guys might be holding on to history, which is kind of cool too. For someone who's just getting their start in photography, do you recommend, they, like, is, is street photography like a good entryway into the overall industry? Um, I think you just have to f- first get into training your eye. Yeah. Right? Just simple things. It doesn't have to be s- street. If you jump right into street, that's fine too. But just, you know, it's simple day to day stuff. I always, if you have pets, that's probably the best thing for you to start with. Yeah. Or kids. Right? Or kids. kids. Oh, crazy. Pets, yeah. Families. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's I would, awesome. uh, for honestly, like, learn the camera first. Know, know your, what your, 
what the settings on the camera do aperture shutter I, iso no if you get those three down mm-hmm. then really photography can be very easy yeah all, all it is is now just you creating and yeah. um, things that you want to see yeah. or you uh documenting things that you want that you want to look at yeah uh from there um yeah, that's where cool. people are getting into it it you can yeah start at home. Yeah. I started at home just shooting myself. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you just just taking selfies. <laughs> taking selfies. You can start anywhere, man. Yeah, here's, so uh, okay, here's here's the other thing. <laughs> we know him for a street. But there was there's a chapter of his life oh where boy. he was doing studio. Oh, crazy! All right, so wow. he started out straight glamour shots. Pretty much, square one. yeah. It was it was actually with a fashion photographer. Oh, yeah. snap! Wow. Um, and I was behind the scenes with doing the lighting. Yeah. Uh, for uh, doing the lighting uh, setups for him. Yeah. And I learned a lot about photography at that point. That's sick. It's a lot about um, just lighting and yeah. how it hits people's face and That's so on dope. and so forth so that was that was really an eye opener for me mm. but at that time I was in school and it was very expensive so <laughs> uh, I couldn't really dive into it that much so I had to put it on pause hey man <laughs> but hey we love the work that you're doing now so keep it up you know pre- in the previous segment we talked about street photography and just how you guys really enjoy just the rawness and the non-structured aspect of it Um, And then, you know, as we were talking about it, you guys started, you know, talking about certain types of gear, uh, you know, talking about Sony, talking about Fuji, talking about HP. We heard some iPhone talking there as well. Let's let's now talk about the best photography gear, because for someone who, you know, you you can look at this in many different ways. For someone who's just getting their start, they're probably wondering where they should start. But for someone who's really good with an iPhone, whether they're an influencer or someone that just knows how to use the iPhone, um, sometimes when they're taking amazing shots, people may not really respect their craft because they're like, oh, you're doing this on an iPhone. You don't know how to use a real camera. Similar to like DJs who use uh, Serato versus vinyl, right? There's always this interesting conversation taking place. Oh, you're, you're not authentic or whatever. But um, we'd love to get all three of your perspectives regarding some of the best photography gear and what you think are the essentials. Like, like what, are your, what are the essentials when it comes to um, taking this craft seriously and really arming yourself with things that are going to work for you? And uh, Flash, you talked about some of the essentials that you need to know as a photographer. But if you're someone that's just starting out, that's fresh, that really wants to get into it and doesn't want to solely rely on their iPhone 11, what would you recommend? You're just starting out. <clears throat> Honestly, do what Dusty did. Just get a point and shoot. Mm-hmm. Uh, that right there can can service you for a good while until you actually figure out what you want to do and yeah. what style you want to actually shoot. From there, that can go into uh, the step up is like what Streak had, the Rebel. It's like uh, it's not quite. Uh, it is a DSLR, but it's not like. Uh, a real serious DSLR. It's a, uh, it's Shots. um, it's like an entry level DSLR, and um, after that, you're going into mirrorless and actual full frames. And if you're one of those hobbyist people, you can get the Leicas and you get all the. <laughs> That's when it gets expensive. <laughs> yeah, you, expensive. Don't need like them, man. you don't get need a Leica. Hasselblads, and then you're up there, and then that's when you're professional. You're a real maker. That's crazy. So, you, so, so you're, you recommend the approach of just kind of easing into it, easing getting a point of shoot it. to kind of test it out. Yeah. Because this entire game is not a cheap one for no, sure. Yeah. You can even start with your iPhone. My yeah. my wife does amazing iPhone photos, and I'm yeah. actually jealous all the time. I'm like, <laughs> big up I'm, Kim. I can't even yeah, do these shots. Kim. She's in Shout the studio too. Kim, she she has the headphones on. She's listening. She's Cold listening. Producing. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, but you know what? I, I respect that because when you look at iPhones, like recent sort of billboard campaign. It was very much like shot on iPhone. But whatever. they've had that for years. Yeah. Like since, yeah. what, uh, iPhone 5? iPhone 6? 5, 6, yeah. And the thing is, I think it's just the programming. People think that if you purchase a camera, <laughs> I can take <laughs> pictures. Yeah. But you're paying a thousand plus for something, which is now just the way we move in the society. It's geared for photography. Yeah. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with, you know, starting off with this. Uh, you have to look at all this gear as. W- you know, every 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 tool is um, it's a different tool you need for d- different types of jobs you're doing, right? If you're doing this, if you're doing like like Flash was doing a fashion photography in the studio, yeah. you you'll need a strobe light, you'll need a couple different lenses for portraits or you know, but if you're doing street photography, it's a different type of lens and camera you might need, and you can do a lot of uh, street photography with your iPhone. You know, the objective of the game is, you know. 
uh, b- beyond getting all the pictures is being very discreet in the shots that you're getting and till this day there isn't anything as discreet as a phone yeah because people don't mind if you're just there shooting with your phone or recording them but the minute you pull out a camera it turns into a different conversation mm. which is weird right yeah. so for me like it, it all depends on you know what you're trying to do what you're trying to get out of it uh, if if there is a budget, if there's no budget, you should you shouldn't let a budget you know hinder you from getting into this, because you can literally start with anything, anything small. Because the, the main objective is uh, training your eye. Yeah. No, I like that. I like the fact that you you you, uh, you kind of put that out there, Dusty. Because I think a lot of people do get deterred to want to try new things because they're like, oh, I don't have the money to buy the very best equipment. But sometimes when you're just getting started, you don't need the very best. No, and and I have this conversation all the time. And, and and people think like when they ask me that question like hey what should I start with the first thing I tell them is you don't need gear get a phone and they always have this look in their face like <laughs> no like that's not what I want to hear okay so it, it's funny that you say that because I I can guarantee that all three of us at the start we're like yo we need a nice camera to do this <laughs> stuff no no I honestly bro <laughs> but the way I started it wasn't like that I had yeah. to prove to myself because it is over time right this is now when we're getting into hobby photography, right? Yeah. You're doing things. It, it's not just costing you money-wise to purchase this gear. You're also It also costs you your, your time. Mm. Yeah. So what is the ROI on the entire process, right? Which yeah. is very subjective depending on what you're doing. Yeah. So if you're starting out, you know, do it in small increments. You know, prove to yourself that you understand. The th- thing is, with anything you get into, you have to first learn the language, because people. I have I have this per I have this uh, one individual at my work, who has about I think four thousand worth of gear, and he doesn't use any of it because he was just told that's what you should be getting when he went to Henry's. Oh, so word. now we're kind of working backwards as... Swindled him. <laughs> right, right. But at the, at the same time, like, I keep telling him that, listen, you actually have a lot to begin with, yeah. so you should actually utilize this. And now, you know, he just had a baby, so I said, hey, you use this to take the pictures. You don't need to be hiring people. Yeah. Learn, Take this time to learn the language, learn how your gear works, and, and utilize it, right? You're pretty much starting off at the top. Yeah. No, I, no, I think that's that's really good advice, man. Because I think some people do get caught up in that. Strick, what about you, man? What what was the uh, like? What do you feel like are the essentials when it comes to photography? Or someone getting um, into it? Other than the the equipment, uh, confidence is a huge thing that you need, especially with street yeah. photography. Like for me, it's it's been one of those things where you put yourself in situations you typically wouldn't be in if you didn't have a camera in front of your face, mm. especially when you're you're trying to take portraits of people or just trying to capture moments. So one of the main things is just being okay with going outside, maybe if it's by yourself or going out with a group yeah, and just being confident taking pictures, like as silly as you may look with a, a big camera in the middle of the street, like just do it because at the end of the day, no one's really looking inside your camera until the end of it when they see the results, right? Yeah. So, that, that would be one thing. And also, um, in terms of equipment, like I hardly use my phone to take pictures, to be honest. Like I, I, I it is the thing that I have with me the most. Mm. Um, but I know some amazing photographers, again, like, as you said, Kim takes sick pictures, especially of food. Shout like, out to Kim. Crazy yeah. pictures. <laughs> and like my homie Gabe, like amazing only iPhone photographer. But for them, it's like, I guess it's because it's the most accessible thing with them. They're always carrying it around with them. It's, it's easy for me. Like using a camera is just, I like fine tuning some of the details while I'm while I'm shooting. So I'm able to do that with like the body uh, of the the camera instead. And for f- street photography, you don't really need much to be honest. You could shoot street photography with a point and shoot. You could be using like the most expensive camera, and the point and shoot will probably end up being better just because of convenience, the way it looks. And when Dusty was saying having a big camera does kind of change the way that you're your images will turn out not in terms of like how you're shooting but people's perception of what you're shooting for yeah, right yeah and, and we've all talked about this like all of us have transitioned over from using big cameras like intimidating looking mm. professional cameras to mm. things we can just put in our pocket and people are like oh yeah these guys aren't really going to take much pictures <laughs> and, then they, and they don't realize that once we go and like you know <laughs> extract the card put it onto our laptop we're like wow these are crazy yeah yeah so, yeah, it's a lot of it is just perception, I would say. Because like, and to your point, like I think someone who, like when you think of, I think when you think of a photographer, you think about a gigantic camera in their hand, 
maybe with like the disposable light bulb breaking every time you take a photo. Like you think about paparazzi, right? You think about like something gigantic that's covering their entire face that they're going to have to bring with them every single time they mm-hmm. go out and shoot something, which is not the case anymore. Like to your point, like I remember Flash, like you, we went to the Travis Scott concert you had like a point of shoot, yeah. right? Yeah. And the shots you crazy took were phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Like crazy. they were amazing. Like I don't know why Travis ever hired you for the tour <laughs> after. <laughs> just like straight but, up. Oh, he brought yeah. in. Yeah. 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 He was, he was <laughs> waiting for that. He was waiting for that. <laughs> um, actually, I want to I go back a little bit. How, like, because all of us are, are in and around the same age. Do you guys remember when like that first cell phone came out with the camera and like how do you guys feel about sort of the impact of the cellular phone to the photography industry because as soon as they started to have a camera in those things like I remember my first phone was this like Motorola flip phone it had the most nastiest camera though like it was like not a good camera at all like it was super grainy but like at the time we're like oh sweet i got a camera on my phone like take photos like how did you how do you guys like in the in the grand scheme of things when it comes to the art and the craft that you guys put into this what's your overall thoughts on the fact that a camera is readily available in your pocket for for me when the iphone i think it was iphone 3 or 4 it had a camera on it mm-hmm. and when but i think it was an update on iphone 4 or 5 and they allowed you to I'll edit like photos and videos on it I felt like I was like a director right away <laughs> honestly I was like if you look deep in the YouTube you can find a video that I actually made off oh, of my phone snap. and wow. uh, it's don't even try looking right now <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about to it's yeah about to. so like it, it really did open up a lot for me and it made me feel like very empowered that I can actually take these photos now I can do these videos and I can edit it right away right now and it's so discreet and I can have it in my pocket it was so great for me that's how I felt when I had the when I with with especially with uh, cell phones and then obviously my little HP helped me out too (laughs) (laughs) now HP you're getting a little emotional about it man my brother broke it man (laughs) I think think the the, uh, accessibility (laughs) to like you know having a resource like that that you can just create on the spot yeah it kind of took took away that stigma that existed in all the di- all the different fields that okay in order for you to make it you have to purchase this x amount of gear and then you have to be part of this studio or agencies for you to get work otherwise yeah. you won't be looked through you yeah. have to go to formal training so i think in general just how we're moving and a lot of it is coming off the phone just how we're making music you know consuming music consuming information um i think i think it's it's a big win yeah yeah big win with this uh technology yeah no it is totally totally strictly steel man what what are your thoughts on when you saw the first camera phone I wanted one. Yeah. <laughs> I, wanted one I was like, what? You can make phones, calls, text people, go on the internet and take pictures. And MP3. And yeah, MP3. MP3. It was, it was just like yeah. <laughs> everything in one. But um, no, I just, as the accessibility aspect of it is amazing. And especially now, like, you see people using phones to share pictures with people they wouldn't typically share or like people of different generations too right like I got my grandma on whatsapp I can send her pictures and stuff yeah. like that too yeah. so th- in terms of the accessibility I, I really enjoy the aspect of it in terms of like now it, it seems as if phones are trying s- very hard to replicate what a camera does yeah it seems like doing that. it in a digital way and it's it's a good thing in terms of like making the technology catch up but Again, I think sometimes we're too overwhelmed by specs rather than just understanding the foundations and the fundamentals of why are you actually taking a picture? Mm. Like, are you going to look yeah. back? Or what are you going to do with it? Are you going to send it to someone? Are you hoping to get a response from it? Like, what, what's your... And that's something that we always try and keep in mind. Like, whenever we're shooting, like, some of us only shoot certain things and we always have that idea of, okay, what, what kind of story are we trying to tell? Like, what are we going to portray? And, and I think that's... You can do that with the phone. But sometimes it's easy to get distracted from not doing that as well. Yeah. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's about did you get the shot or not, mm. yeah. right? If you, you know, you have this magical camera that takes the best pictures in the world, and then you end up seeing something or meeting someone, and you really want to capture this moment, and all you have is let's go back to even maybe a BlackBerry. You have a BlackBerry on you, and you got to use this camera <laughs> oh, to take a pearl. picture. I you my will pearl. use it, yeah, hundred percent. You yeah. will use that to get that picture yeah. because at that point, now it's not about the specs; it's about capturing that moment. Yeah, and I think we just gotta 
you know, unlearn some things and reprogram ourselves to think like that when, when you're moving in this field. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that, Dusty, because now when I think about camera phones, right, you think about the first generation of it. Again, the photos were not that clear, a little grainy. Now you're seeing like the Huawei phones with like the 10 times lens. Like it's actually just people out there that are shooting Matt. legitimately <laughs> really like their business photos off this Huawei phone. Like yeah. I know someone that runs a business and she's like, I bought this Huawei phone so now I can take shots of some of the fashion items that I'm selling, right? Wow. And it's crazy to see how, how, how it shifted. How, how much of this, how much of this game is too much reliance on sort of photo quality versus the actual content that's in the photo. Because there's some people I know that are like, oh no, the photo sucks because it's so blurry. But then in some ways it's like, it's meant to be blurry because of what you're trying to depict and sort of the artistic side of things. So like, how much of this is, are people obsessed with sort of the quality of what they're using versus what they can actually do with what they have? I think it, it comes down to like photography as as good as the image is, it's also subjective as well, right? Mm-hmm. So, like we were having a conversation, we were at a gallery the other day, um, checking out some <laughs> some film work, <laughs> and we had like a really good <laughs> good discussion. And this is yeah, all of please, us. In please this. elaborate, man. What, yeah. what you guys were? Don't throw anyone um, under the bus. Yeah, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. We were at this gallery, and it was basically documenting <laughs> <laughs> this one artist that we only discovered like on on that day. His name is Larry Tao. Um, and he's, fr- he's a Magnum photographer. So Magnum is like an elite group of mm-hmm. photographers and they document certain things. It could be photojournalism in like war-torn countries, refugee crisis, like things that are happening around the world. And we had this conversation of like, what makes a great photo is it, <coughs> the, the composition of it, of course, is important. Like you have to be able to use your camera understand that you let in enough light in and you're making sure that things are you know clear and, and sharp but there's also like a, a big element of you're in the environment or you're in a place where things are going to be different mm. and it's going to be shocking yeah and, it, and it's going to appear as if like that moment you created it but it was just it, not by chance but you would just happen to be there at, by luck and is able to just capture it at that same time and it's one of those things like when you when you see some people that aren't into photography and they and they see a, a very simple picture which if you ask any of us simple pictures are the, the hardest to do like that's why portrait photography is so moving to me and they're like oh that's so easy like i could have done that i'm like <laughs> No, you, no, you couldn't have. <laughs> like, you couldn't have done that. Like, you, you wouldn't have had the same conversation with that person prior to taking that photo. You wouldn't have been able to manipulate the surroundings the same way as the. That, so, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's, sub, it's a very subjective art form, but it also does rely on your environment and it's. I find because uh, we're talking that same day, and I would chimed in, and I said to I've said to them, <laughs> a lot of the photography that this this photographer was doing, it like you said, it, it's simple but it's complex. Mm, mm. But at the same time, it's not that it's not anything out of the realm that we couldn't have done. It's not like oh he needed like a big production to get this done, and we yeah. didn't know how he did it. Yeah, it was very simple street photography. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing is, I feel photography a lot of the time is the fact that it's it's by um, opportunity, mm. the opportunity that you're there. Yeah, and he he was there documenting these stuff. He knows how to use a camera, and obviously, and he he and he we can see it through his photos. He knows he, Strick knows how to use camera. Ammon knows how to use a camera. Dusty knows how to use a camera. If you were put in that same situation. Mm. Not, I'm not going to say his, his pictures will look to come out the same. It'll look like a Dusty photo or it'll look oh, like a okay. Strick photo or okay. it'll look like a, a my photo. Yeah. We would document the same thing yeah. and not to say anything wrong about that he was, sorry, not to say anything wrong <laughs> that he was, um, or that the photos are easy or any way, um, any, in any way. It's yeah. the fact that his opportunity was there, so he took it. Hmm. Only thing, that opportunity is pretty tough bro I will not be out there <laughs> because the opportunity <laughs> comes with bullets you get me yeah. like you're taking pictures of these people they're amputated and there's a chance that someone might shoot you in the back of the head I'm not taking that chance yeah. you know what I mean I'll, yeah. I'll stay in the streets of Toronto yeah. once again those are just opportunities that he right. took and you never took 100% so, yeah. that's all it is that's crazy man uh, actually I got a list here let's, let's just go through it because I love doing this on the show I love actually like 
na- like getting people's thoughts on different articles. Now that we're at, towards the end of 2019, there's all these 2019 articles coming out, decade lists and all that. So there was uh, an article that came up. Let me just open it real quick. Da, 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 da. It, it had to do with like the top top camera gear of of 2019. Do you guys pay attention to lists like that, or is it just like? Yeah, they're we, fun. They're fun. To, yeah, to it's like a FYI. Yeah, yeah, I don't really like, care about yeah. that. Like, like, yeah, is there anything <laughs> that, like, when you look at this, like, oh, yeah, I need to, uh, that's definitely a must cop. Um, okay, let me just open this up. So, the phone's it's like more right just now. to, yeah, just for a conversation. <laughs> just just to, to the lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'd be like, ah, oh, did you see this? <laughs> so, so this, this list that I'm going to pull up, shout, shout out to Colorblind Photography. I'm an animal for you sending me this link if I can get it to work. It's not loading right now. But the Huawei camera phone was on there. Yeah. So, so it was like the 10 time lens and they're talking about how like it's like really, really dope and it's able to get so many good shots. Do you guys like the fact that smartphones are going to have camera quality features so that, you know, they're pretty much making those readily available to everyone versus having to spend a ton of money on a Canon or, or a Fuji device that maybe has the same type of features that doesn't have the phone per se like, i don't i don't mind it yeah i i don't mind the fact that i don't they have the all the features oh, yeah. what i do mind is the fact that now we have like you just said these people are doing businesses off of these things <laughs> and they're making grand money for this and i'm like well they're and they're not putting in the craft they're not even thinking about the craft they're just doing it because now they're just they want to make money. Yeah, it was, a, the, it. it was a P30 Pro, and this is actually this is from a website called PopPhoto.com. Do you guys follow PopPhoto? I've heard of it. Okay, so the P30 Pro was the was one of the best, well, considered one of the best ca- camera gear of the year. After that, there was the Apple's Deep Fusion, which I think is on the iPhone 11. So it's the, a burst of photos from before you even push the shutter button. So I think it's just once you. Once you hit the, I, actually, I got an iPhone 11. Like I just got one, so I'll probably test this out later. But I think it's the ability to capture a number of different shots, like right away. Yeah. Like in, in a distinct, in an instant, versus yeah. having to wait. Do you guys like that? Like, do you guys like the, these tech features that are sort of coming into the art that you know are what? making like, things easier? It's crazy. Now that I've been doing photography for so long, that all of us and not just the people in this room but all of my photography friends have gone back to the fundamentals of just shutter speed iso Mm -hmm. and aperture i like all the fancy stuff is just like the main three yeah it's (laughs) just they're cool like they're cool but it's they're just features that you're not going to necessarily use all the time and like as, as you're talking about iphones and like the huawei phone dope it's it's super cool to see how like photography now is being taken seriously by these big companies like they're partnering up with Leica and Carl Zeiss and yeah. like making sure that even if people are taking photos with their phone like the hobbyists can still enjoy like good quality and, and at the end of the day like you could give someone the Huawei phone photos could still turn out trash like yeah. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't necessarily yeah. mean it's going to make you an amazing photographer it just means that it's an easier tool and it the same thing as you were saying about like DJing right like yeah. you could use Serato you could use all of these things that will make you um, load your music faster it doesn't necessarily make you a better DJ mm-hmm. like you still have to curate a playlist you still have to be able to like cut and then same thing with photography you still have to come compose you still have to know moments you still have to be in the right environment so yeah yeah, it's it's just it's just an extra tool it's just one of many tools yeah Yeah. and that's what you need to understand you Mm -hmm. can get the most uh I mean, you, you know what this, you can get the best knife in the world. It will never replace what a spoon does, what mm-hmm. a fork does, right? Mm-hmm. Every tool has its own purpose. So even with the people getting, you know, these latest phones and uh, the only only thing I, I don't like about uh, some of these things is it kind of really waters down the industry where yeah. when someone gets something like that, they really feel like I can do the same thing that you do, right? Which is fine, but now try using your phone and doing event photography, Right, your phone doesn't come with a flash. <clears throat> how yeah. you co- how will you compensate for that? Well, it's, right? it's it's also funny because I like you think about some of these professional photographers out there. If they're buying into a Huawei phone that has like so many features. Imagine you hire them for a gig, and maybe this is a good segue for our next topic. But imagine you hire them for a gig, and all they do is show up with their phone, like. There's that perception, like, is this person serious? Like, are they gonna <laughs> Should get... I take this person serious? <laughs> yeah. And, and I remember somebody, it's, it's very, I'm glad you brought up the DJ industry straight because I've had conversations with DJs where 
they don't use like Serato or anything. They have like a mixing program on their iPad. And mm-hmm. They just plug it in and they just use the iPad and apparently the party is amazing. And it's just, it's hilarious how there's this perception around, oh, if you do this, I'm expecting you to show up with like, you Thank know, you. Uh, yeah, a tripod, a big time camera, maybe even like some type of light to better the reflection. No, uh, we have this conversation with, I have this conversation with Amit when he was first starting out uh, this is prior to him getting Lightroom. So he was shooting the stuff off his, off the Sony, but then just editing the pictures and VSCO. Yeah. Right? You don't have the same flexibility. Uh, you're actually cheating yourself by not editing the RAW files. You're just editing the JPEG. Yeah. But that's something he had to learn because he probably saw the limitations it, it had. Yeah. And then the next step was, okay, I need to invest in this monthly subscription to Lightroom and Photoshop and really start using the files to their full advantage. So all this stuff is great Mm -hmm. and I think there's a time and place for everything. And I think sometimes some people will, you know, just, you'll learn as you go. Yeah. And maybe you'll hit a wall and then you'll understand, okay, maybe, you know, I've capped out with what this phone can really do. Mm -hmm. Still a great phone, but if I need to do, say, portrait photography, you can't beat like a 50 millimeter plus lens. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah there's actually, uh, I, I was going to continue the, what, continue reading down the list, but there's a Sony camera on there. So I don't want to cause any disagreements <laughs> in the room. Uh, but, but I do want to talk about, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I do want to talk about one more thing before we go to commercial break is I've seen, uh, I've seen Dusty of you. Um, I've seen you use a lot of film and actually post it on your IG on your website, a lot of film photos. And to me, like I'm seeing like film and even some, even Polaroid or the Polaroid technology as almost being very similar to the resurgence of vinyl and music. It's like there's hand in hand, like people are, tr- are maybe now going back to the fundamentals because they're looking for that type of aesthetic. What are your thoughts on someone who's never, who's getting into photography and has never taken a photo with a film producing camera versus a digital camera? Like, do you think that they need to sort of learn every single aspect for them to be uh, good or? I think you can, like, it's such a big feel, like you can start anywhere. The, you know, the objective is as long as you're starting yeah. and you're understanding and you're growing and you're challenging yourself, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you said, you know, with the resurgence of this stuff coming back, people like it for the aesthetic. That's probably the the part I don't like. Yeah. Right? Because it's the same people having conversations about, oh, things need to be sharp or look how clean this digital image looks. But then they, they'll they take a film shot not understanding the settings or it will actually even the properties of the film the film the shot will be blurry and they'll say oh that's dope it looks cool (laughs) I mean you can literally get the exact same thing on your digital you can get it on your iPhone it's it's too much glare and you're like oh it looks amazing yeah no I've seen that I've seen that but you know I have found like over the years and I'm sure these guys know too when you're talking to people about this and you're having these discussions in your groups you know who to have the conversation with Mm. and at a certain point with certain people you just don't you can only share so much yeah. but they're just not receptive to hearing yeah. uh, you know the other things and they'll do what <clears> they <throat> need to do if they yeah. if if they're you know they're satisfied with getting whatever they need to get by buying a $10,000 camera <clears throat> then that's th- that's their path but now I want to switch gears a little bit you know we talked about uh, sort of the art behind street photography we talked about uh, the gear that people typically want to buy before they get into the industry or what you guys think is the best gear around and what you all three of you use to get started. Um, Now I want to switch gears to more of the business of photography versus the art of photography. So maybe looking at it from a from a hobby standpoint, but also looking at it as a, as a means to make money. And what I find interesting about all three of you is you guys each have different day jobs. Um, you guys also have a lot of different interests as well. Um, and, and photography has always just kind of been there. Like it's always kind of just been a big part of your life, a uh, big part of all three of your lives. And you guys just continue on with it, which I, which I love. I think if you have a passion for something, no matter what you're doing in life, I think you should always follow it and continue to keep it going. Cause it's a great way to kind of stay sane and, and stay uh, stay grounded uh, but have you like i want to get deep into some of your theories regarding just some of the business practices that you guys see in the photography industry and any experiences that you guys have had when it comes to people that have either tried to hire you for gigs try to commission some of your work for galleries um have you been sort of hit you up with the with the classic leo we sh- you know let's collab <laughs> exposure <laughs> that happens exposure. a lot um, especially in this day and age, like I bring it up a lot, but we do live in this social media age where a lot of people are in the business of having really nice photos. And there's some people that really want 
really nice photos on their Instagram pages and on their Facebook pages and on their social feeds because, again, it just there's this uh, yearning of wanting to have something good to look at. So let's just go around the table. Like I'll start off with the first question: Is um, how many of you have actually like have actually made some good income from photography when it comes to being hired for a gig? It doesn't have to be like consistent income, but have actually you know because of your work you've been paid you know a good amount of money that you feel is a good amount to actually go out there and and produce you know a set of photos for a client for you know either a fashion shoot or even something to do with music or something to do with art like has that has that ever happened the strict will begin with you yeah for for me it's been mostly through networking mm -hmm. like um a lot of my friends in photography we all met um, there's this place called Free in, in Toronto. It's like a creative agency. And mm -hmm. a lot of us met there from just the curiosity of learning more about photography. So a lot of gigs came up through that. Like, um, I've personally done like gigs ranging from like studio shoots to like a red carpet event, which I wasn't even prepared for, <laughs> um, to okay. doing like, um, like a, a photography in an apartment for like a, a rental listing so mm. I've been exposed to like different things like that and it, it kind of makes you sharper in other aspects because you're dealing with the business side and you're not able to be as creative like no one wants to see some crazy bouquet and like some crazy black and white photos yeah. when you're taking a picture of an apartment you, there's an industry standard and I think that's what it's helped me with is just realizing that there's there's an industry standard especially within Toronto of of what to expect some of them positive and some of them not so positive yeah uh, but yeah it's you, there's definitely ways to make money in the city as a freelance photographer um, and uh, probably about two years ago we all had the same conversation about it was the, the era when everyone was doing photo shoots for like $150 $100 and like to us that's like sacrilegious like what do you mean like yeah. it costs the $100 just to rent a lens for the day so and and then you also have to account all the time it takes for editing photos and things like that so i think that era it's i don't i don't really see it as much now i'm not sure if you guys still see it. i i still see it but yeah. like in new york yeah but i i get it if you need 100 bucks you need 100 dollars. you need yeah. 100 bucks you need yeah. 100 bucks for your rent you yeah. can't do anything about it we have friends in our circle that sometimes do stuff like that mm -hmm. and and we've been vocal and said hey don't take these gigs because you're only encouraging people yeah. To make that the norm, but yeah. at the same time, I'm not paying their rent. So yeah, yeah. they're gonna get the money how they want to get different. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then that's that's a great point to bring up, Dusty, because I remember even for me being like a hired MC or even like a curator, um, or even like talking to DJs or talking to artists. Like I, I've always, it, it's good to kind of think about it in the sense of not thinking about, you know, sure you want to think about being able to pay your bills or pay your rent or pay whatever you need to pay for. That's, you know, probably coming up soon. But there's another thing ab around thinking about the overall craft and the overall industry. Yeah, and like once, collectively. Yeah, and then once you undercut somebody, you're not setting up the next person to no. be treated fairly. And I've seen that a lot, like even in, in sort of the dealings I've had where people have undercutted me and like i'll flat out say no and then i'll see one of my buddies do it and i'll reach out to him like dude like and you don't have to tell me how much you got paid but like did you at least get treated fairly and then they'll tell me oh no i did it for free because i was thinking this would be a good opportunity you're just like man like you're ruining it for all of us you know <laughs> like it's not just for one person like you're ruining it you're ruining the sort of the ceiling for everybody and I, like I like the point you bring up because I find that right now specifically when you think about photography in general there's a lot of photographers for hire out there like even if you were to just go on Fiverr like you'll see a bunch of photographers yeah. on there you see people on Instagram promoting their stuff I remember when I was booking a photographer for my wedding which I'm sure Flash you've been through and Strick you're probably going through right now um it's it's crazy like it's crazy how people operate their businesses on IG and like you just get mm -hmm. bombarded with different rates and different people and it's just nuts, man. This industry, like, there is no real standard, if you ask me. Unless, unless you guys have seen other things, I don't know. Uh, well, it's it, there is there is and there isn't. Like, they they go by like. For I'm just gonna use the wedding photography as the example. Like, you there's people that range from. 
two thousand to a couple of thousand up there, like almost ten thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, with yeah. It. And you're getting with video and everything. So, and there's money to be made. Uh, that's the that's the key there. There's money to be made. It's and it's up to the photographer and the type of sty- uh, type of photography they want to do. I've mentioned this to Dusty multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, this is this is not what I want to do. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I have a person at work that she wants me to photog- uh, do her photographer wedding, and she's gonna actually pay me to fly out to wherever she is. Oh, going to crazy it. man! And I I was thinking, I'm like, I don't. But the thing is, I'm like, as a friend. I don't want to overcharge her, yeah. but as a business side, you're like, charge her what you're supposed yeah. to charge her. And that's yeah. my business side right there. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. like, charge her what no, you're supposed to charge her. Because that person <laughs> is willing to pay somebody else the same amount exactly. so why, do, why not come yeah, but come yeah. as a friend I don't want to be charging her like five grand for the or three four grand for the for that's what's going to cost for a it's wedding true. photographer business wedding. is business yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying you got to right. separate it from uh, personal from business yeah. at the same time but. I, that's, that's a fair challenge because um, me, me and Dusty always joke about homeboy business like there's always <laughs> people that are like yo come on man just do me this one favor yeah. you know I'll, I'll come I'll go don't worry I got you next time and like that next time never comes like you're just yeah. continuing like doing favors for each other and and again like I've even seen like um, people that do shoots for like artists and like again it's just like, on a whole collaboration tip but then again it sucks when you hear about some of these artists like paying other people to do stuff and you're like well I thought I was getting you from the whole collaboration point of view right like and that's that's the one thing like I, I guess how, how do you guys watch out for those types of opportunities or are you do you feel like you're in a situation right now based on the work that you produce that you know right now my career where I want to go in this photography game these are the types of opportunities that actually work to my benefit I think we're we're very fortunate that the luxury that we have of also working another job while (laughs) doing this as well and we treat it like it's full time even though we only do it on the weekends we, we still treat it as if okay if we're going like you gotta put in those 10,000 hours and know what you're yeah, doing so, you, well, comes, man. Yeah. so it comes out properly but I think the most important part is like sometimes you're not gonna get paid for the service you do but it it, it might lead you to being around the circle or it might lead you to like learning some new information that will help you in the long run and and sometimes that is worth more than getting that two thousand dollar gig that you thought would be paying your rent yeah you know and it it will lead to a long-term opportunity but i think is a lot of the times it's hard for people to to figure out when to take those opportunities because there's definitely corporate companies that take advantage especially in toronto because there's so many creators out here i know friends that do a lot of corporate gigs for like a lot of big sportswear brands and still waiting on invoices oh like, my God, stuff yeah. like that and, and you, you can see that they're using the, the content in their campaigns and everything yeah and yeah. You're, you're not seeing and, and that's that's a huge shame man when you see these big time corporations who you know deal with vendors on a consistent yeah. basis then when they hire like a uh, you know an up and coming photographer or someone who pretty much runs their own business that they don't get treated the same way but mm-hmm. for me like I think it's it's easy to blame the brand, but it is the people that are in charge of running these programs yeah, and mm-hmm. hiring people. If you're somebody in, like, who's in charge of a project and in general you're just a shrewd person, that's how you deal with, with people and you think that, hey, if you can do it, I can do it too, so what am I paying you extra for? What do you expect that person, you know, when they're hiring people for something, you know, like a big name brand? So if yeah. they're hiring you for like, like a Nike or so, they'll position themselves as, hey, we're Nike, it's up to you if you want to do this gig or not and mm-hmm. I can get almost anyone which yeah. in a lot of the cases it happens right because yeah. the kids want that name so they'll go for it and sometimes it works towards your benefit and sometimes it doesn't so it's very like intuition driven yeah no it is it is yeah. you, know, you almost have to kind of weigh the opportunity yeah and yeah. say hey should I some of the sort of the dilemma flash you're facing when like a friend hires you for a wedding it's you know do I treat them like a client and like get sort of what I'm expected or is there a bigger opportunity here where I need to you know scale back a bit yeah I think, that, I think that's that's a challenge man that's a challenge as an entrepreneur for sure but I think the big advantage he'll he'll have even if say he's charging 5,000 and they're hiring somebody else for mm. 5,000 is his picture is at 5,000 
will be very personable, personable and more memorable compared to an outsider because yeah. they don't know the family. So he'll be able to get pictures which, which will be much more lasting and re- really connect with the family a lot more than just hiring like an outsider. No, to totally. Because right? totally. I've done I've done two weddings just for fun mm-hmm. because, you know, these are like my close friends. So I just wanted to document it. Yeah. The way I, I wanted to document it, yeah. not the wedding photographers. And in both cases, they've liked my pictures more than the person <laughs> they paid for. Four or six that's awesome, man. Yeah. Which kind of sucks because at the end you're like, man, I could have made some money. <laughs> but at the same time, like these guys know I don't want that responsibility. Yeah. I'm just not into like event, you know, like a hire photographer. So yeah, I won't I, do that. Actually, just to switch gears a bit. So when we're looking at this business versus art this sort of conversation, um, obviously each 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 of three of you and actually all four, including Amit as well, um, you guys have your own unique, distinct style on how you bring photos to life like how you use the equipment that you use. Um, how do you deal with a client that wants you to do something that's not within your style, but more so either goes against your style, but something that's totally just bland that, you know, you and your heart know that someone else can probably do it, but you're getting hired to do it and you're, hi- and you're getting hired to sort of make it happen. Like how do you go about sort of putting aside your artistic integrity just to get the job done? You just stick it out, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Like if you're getting paid for it, and they're paying you're paying they're paying you the money yeah. so they you and they have a spec- if they're if they don't give you creative um, open opportunity <laughs> to do what you want then and they want a specific look or a specific look um, then you just stick it out and do what they want then you get paid and then you walk away but yeah. if they're like giving you open range of what you can do like Dusty in, in his um, situation um, he not to say that they told him or they were like oh come to the thing and you shoot he came there and shot on his own yeah. uh, and then it turned out amazing so then if they're allowing you to do that and they don't give you any uh uh, any instructions then you can yeah. do what you want but in my case is like when people approach me they're approaching me based on the work they've seen yeah. I don't go yeah. around asking these people like, can I shoot this whatever so if you seen most of my work and if it's in black and white not that I just shoot black and white it, it's just always weird to me that they come and they say okay we want this but like we want it all color and yeah. we want flash and yeah. it's like you know it just doesn't work so in, for in my case like I wouldn't take that but like strict has more experience of doing like he's done like retail gigs and mm-hmm. stuff, like for um, real estate too right yeah, yeah. so he knows that look that they're going for mm-hmm. and he'll bang it out yeah and it's cool. like it kind of relates to me like my brother's in the DJ in the music industry as well and it's like there's some gigs he would just have to play songs that he would never play in his own house right he would never listen to but it pays the bills right yeah and it's like sometimes <laughs> like th- there's some people that just need a photographer for a service like they just need to get something done and they need a photographer they don't have the equipment and they'll just rather hire someone to do it and then there's other people that are coming for your look like they're coming for your aesthetic they're coming mm. for your perspective on certain things and that way you're able to be a little you're able to finesse a little bit more because like okay I'm actually going to need this if you want to replicate this you also have to provide this and it's not like you're you're asking for too much it's like if you want the look then you have to be prepared to yeah. p- provide provide the equipment provide the environment and and help me help you kind of thing and, and that's that's another interesting thing too i had a conversation last week with my wedding photographer she came to our house and did a did a shoot with my daughter congrats and why didn't again? i do it huh? <laughs> 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 i oh, got wow. you Evan. i got you i this told is, you this just got super weird uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're brothers by the way <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert um, hey, yo you want this to be a controversial episode bro I brought it <laughs> whatever I appreciate that I appreciate that hey he's, he's done a bunch of photos already uh, but anyways um, so I, so she, she came to our house did a shoot. Thank, thanks for the congratulatory remarks Strick appreciate it she, she came to our house did, did the photos I had a conversation with her because I remember when I first met her in, in 2016 so shout out to Ramya she um, when I met her she was just getting into weddings and she had a passion for making documentary films and she was working on a documentary for Parks Canada about swamps or something and just about how like you know there's like a there's like a beauty behind them that people mm-hmm. don't really see like it was super deep and then I asked her when I saw her last week like yo how's your documentary coming along and she's like you know what Nav like I've completely put it on hold because I've just been doing weddings now, weddings and and babies and and like e-shoots. And I asked her straight up, I was like, are you like creatively fulfilled? And she said like, she said she she was, but I can sense that 
you know there is a, 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 a there is like a, a want to want to continue some of the creativity and wanting to continue maybe finishing the document mm-hmm. or if they were doing something else so that's another thing I wanted to kind of ask is uh, as, as Amit's phone goes off uh, another thing I wanted to ask is uh, is how do you like how do you hope to manage that how do you hope to pay the bills but to continue to be creative because the one thing that happens to a lot of people that are in the photography industry is unfortunately they do get somewhat stagnant the photos start looking the same they have a formula that they go with it's something that i can relate to when it comes to like emceeing like i used to say no i don't want to emcee weddings and then i got that first wedding paycheck and i'm like okay Jeez. but maybe i'll start with MC <laughs> weddings right and then it's sometimes it can be very formulaic man same thing works for every crowd sometimes right so just wanted to kind of get all three of your perspectives on um, once these types of corporate slash personal gigs start coming up and they are paying the bills versus some of the street photography that you guys are doing as a hobby, how do you go about staying sane and balancing the boat so that you don't feel like a robot? Maybe Strick will begin with you because I'm looking in your direction. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's, it's doing things such as what we already do, like the just casually meeting up on the weekend, taking photos and, and exp- like sometimes we don't even realize exactly what we're doing. It's like practice. It's we, We're just out in a dojo just, just <laughs> shooting mm-hmm. and just just flexing our creative muscle with, with great company and we're learning from each other as well like someone may have like a new camera or a new toy that they're bringing with us like hey i got some new film or i got this new equipment let's test it out and it, it kind of pushes us outside of the the box and and out of our creative like limits of what we we know what to do um but i would say the the thing is you just always have to just make making time is so important like mm-hmm. I know some people that have made the transition into like that wedding and and that like the baby photography and it's super lucrative, super lucrative. But I think what keeps them sane is just having the hobby part of them still intact and being able to just shoot for fun. Maybe it's not even going to go on Instagram or it's not going to be printed off, but it's just, hey, I was able to take that today or Mm -hmm. I was able to go around and, you know, just shoot for fun. And that's what keeps me happy. Like a lot of it is just those weekend shoots where we're walking around taking photos and eating food like a lot of pit stops in between <laughs> it's just stuff that keeps us engaged in this in this craft i find i find that to your point strick like when you're in an industry that you're passionate about but you're doing things that are completely repetitive that you almost feel like it's clockwork i find that when you have that little bit of sort of creativity scheduled in yeah it does make you sort of cope with that versus like being 100 percent creative because sometimes when you're 100 percent creative you do get like you do get a little like you know in this sense it's like photography block right like you just you get this sense of like oh like your creativity doesn't like sink in and you start to wonder oh okay how do i look at things differently mm-hmm. but i'm actually i'm actually of the belief of you or i try to mix it in when it comes to my craft of like stuff that pays the bills but then making sure that there's stuff like this like yeah. the show that like continues to allow me to kind of do what i'm passionate about flash that's that's a great point right there because honestly it is like you got to even though it is repetitive if it's whatever you're doing the paid gig and you're doing it's it is repetitive you try to f- i at least try to fit in your own style mm. and not just what they want because uh, and you can easily just shoot it the way you you would shoot it without them telling you yeah. and just put in your own style and honestly I would say 50 50 times they would be like yo this is a nice picture yeah. and like this is not what they wanted but this is a nice <laughs> picture I'm like oh okay okay yeah like maybe you like more of that so like squ- <laughs> so, squ- squeeze a little bit of flash in there and, and there that will go. squeeze in another session with them because oh, you know crazy. what it's like hey. I like these pictures. Can we do more of these pictures next time? Yeah, Dusty. We, what you we do have friends that uh, <clears throat> initially, when uh, uh, you know they were doing wedding and e shoots and stuff, it was very template based. But over time, when they were able to build a nice, you know. Uh, profile of clients they were able to kind of slowly inject in their creativity so yeah. now it's at a point that when you're hiring them you're not just getting that shot that you see you know oh you know my friend got this type of shot we're yeah. looking for something similar you're also getting it with their twist on it which is already kind of embedded into this stuff so and i think like it's also on you to not just meet your clients uh um requirements but also kind of show them and uh, make them understand like you know what it, what it is that you're doing and what uh, and how you can take their idea to the next level mm-hmm. right otherwise anyone can just shoot like a 
simple picture but what is it about yours that will you know stand the test of time and also like with with us like with the creativity thing i think with all three of us it's not like we schedule time for creativity like this is now kind of become part of our lifestyle yeah right yeah. where this th that create that creative muscle is being worked on non-stop you know if i'm at work if i'm driving or we link up and stuff it's not that we make you know we have uh, you know designated time to work on this but slowly as we're just working day-to-day -day stuff you know ideas will come and you know sometimes we'll shoot some things and just uh, text one another and be like yo what do you think of this mm -hmm. you know okay that's a, you know Flash will be like that's a great idea I think we should expand on that and that kind of becomes the mission for maybe one of our walks in the future mm -hmm. that, okay let's try to see how how far can we push this idea mm -hmm. but um, and the other thing with you know with the whole creativity thing with us like, as Strick was saying we're kind of fortunate that we have a full time gig that we're not dependent on doing you know event photography 24 7 just to pay the bills mm -hmm. and we do have friends that are in that industry and i know how it gets mm -hmm. it gets very redundant and they actually don't have the time to work on the other stuff yeah. because seasonal. you have such a yeah. yeah it's seasonal and you have such a tight deadline with the clients that yeah. you're trying to get you know that's but true here's here's one thing to add like we do all have like our full-time jobs and careers and whatever but if the job opportunity came up for a photography career, yeah, yeah. no, we'd well, go for that in a second. Well, that was my that was my question <laughs> to all three of you before we go to commercial break. If you had the option to go full time, would you go full time? Of course, hundred okay. of hundred yeah. percent. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I, I think for me as well, it's just like, like yeah, no, no, because the thing with me is like. I'm a teacher, obviously, and I, I feel as if I can blend the two worlds a mm. lot better by it, doing both. Dude, so, there was a photography teacher in my high school. Man. Yeah, and yeah. also <laughs> like I, like I, when well, my passion is teaching like language and English, right? Making inferences from photos, like that dusty the photo that you're you're really enjoying right mm. now, the the wheelchair photo. If I was to show that to my students, I could have a whole class just making inferences based off that. Mm. Like I could make an inference off like album art and stuff like that. So. For me, it's like always bridging the two worlds. Like the education aspect would always be there, but also the the photography. Of course, like just give me a camera. I'm I'm shooting anyway. Like um, we only have a couple minutes left. I, I think we could have done a whole show on this uh, on this next topic, but I'm gonna try to squeeze it in, and then I'm gonna give you guys a rundown in the next two weeks of episodes here at New Three Radio. But uh, let's talk about clout chasing. There is a lot of clout chasing I find in the photography industry when you think about some of the photographers that do like Drake's photos or do um, other artists photos or even just like trying to get a photo that eventually ends up becoming like the front page of an album or or a new uh, or on a newspaper or a shot that like the Toronto Raptors uses like there's all these different sort of mechanisms that are out there and I just want to do a quick round table how, like how much of the work that you that you do do you sometimes look at you know spe specifically when it comes to street photography how much of the work that you do when you look at a shot you're like you know if i take the shot right now i know for a fact that if i get it in front of so and so this is going to be like their album cover or this is going to be their next tv spot or this is going to be the next ad that they take out in a magazine like does that ever come across your mind and how have you sort of gone about trying to get that in front of the right person or are you of the belief of, you know, I'm not going to chase the clout. I'm going to continue working on my craft. And if it happens, it happens. I mean, Flash, I've been starting with you the entire time. So we'll yeah. start with Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> and my hands are prepared. Too. He was ready. He was like, moving closer to the mic. And <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where I, I think when I, when we were starting off early, somebody kind of told me that it's never like when you're getting into this art it's never about that one shot mm. nobody's known for one shot they're known for a body of work so that's kind of just what i've always carried with me with everything i do it's about showing a body of work because anybody can get one shot but after that one photo like you know what else can you really do and you know you're talking about the other thing where you know people are trying to take pictures of celebrities and like send them in that's i mean that's part of the culture right now but it only lasts a day or two right and then we're looking for the next picture of that person so as if you're doing that strictly to get into the game like photography wise whatever i don't know how long you'll last right uh because at that point people are just tapping into you just for that content and the content is your access accessibility to like a celebrity but outside of that just you know 
let me see you just do some street shot or, or just portraits of people. Mm. If you actually look at a lot of our stuff, you know, it took me a minute to realize that people actually, gr- uh, the, not just they gravitate towards it because they like the pictures, they're also just looking at pictures of total strangers. Yeah. yeah. And and now we're in the society where we, you know, we're admiring all these photographers because all they do is shoot celebrities or your favorite celebrities. So by default, that's your favorite photographer. And, and a lot of those photographers are dope, but I would like to see just work outside of that thing because there's only so many headshots I want to see of the current celebrity, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Strick, what about you, man? It, that The whole thing you just talked about kind of reminds me of that that pigeonhole that you might be put in because you're known for taking photos of celebrities, right? Yeah. So that's what they expect of you. So like how much of their creative muscle is being stretched by, like maybe they want to do just taking photos of ducks and wildlife, but because they're known for that one photo and they've had to keep replicating that over and over again, they can't go and do their near National Geographic stuff. So it's it's an interesting mix. Mo- for me, the, the the cloud and Instagram, it has it's definitely changed the way that we look at photography and the way that we, I think we value photos less now, yeah. even though we look at them a lot more. If if, if the way I mean by that is like it, the they're very disposable now, right? Like you can post something and then it will be a hot trending photo for a minute and then next thing you know, you're like, okay, what a else? Hot 10 minutes. Yeah, hot 10 <laughs> minutes, right? Whereas like, when's the last time, like everyone in this, when's the last time you saw a photo that like really made you think for like a good 10, 15 minutes and then afterwards you wanted to tell someone else about it. Yeah. Like, the, it's, it's hard to, to put like a uh, grasp on things like that and that's what I guess we're all trying to aspire to not in terms of like we're solely out there and like oh we're gonna get a shot that's everyone's gonna talk about it's like it, it, meaningful like meaningful yeah. content and, and consistent content too um, with, with the the cloud and that word is just yeah it's like you know like the, what what are you, what is the reason why you're taking the photo as I said before like there's a reason for everything right like maybe mm. it's to get exposure so when you get onto that stage you can start doing your national geographic stuff and take photos of ducks but in the meantime you just gotta take pictures of yeah. whatever it is and yeah it's i don't know it's like a it's a it's an interesting mix i guess it really depends on the person too like maybe people do enjoy that yeah. lifestyle because it is a lifestyle as well like it's, our it's a chase though it's yeah a it's, constant constant chase, chase, it's like it's like uh you know people that get into like those VIP parties and yeah. stuff and then we you know we saw some of those people at that last event that we were at we did, yeah. they had no business being <laughs> there but every year they're attending those parties so yeah. it's just a chase that uh, you know the thing that they're chasing just a the high they're chasing so yeah, that's it I don't know man I, I think like you just need to look at things in a like see the bigger Dance picture and just yeah. continue to work on stuff and also th- any picture you take it has to first satisfy you mm-hmm. yeah. right because some, some of my which I feel are my best pictures I like them first mm-hmm. and then maybe some people connect with it or not now that wheelchair picture like it's a great shot but it was actually just sitting on my drive for a while yeah because I just didn't see it I didn't see the thing in it that everybody else sees, mm-hmm. right? I just kind of looked at it from a technical aspect. Okay, the lighting's really gr- good. Everything lines up. This is dope. So I just ha- happened to share it. But there are pictures I've posted, which I feel like there's a lot more, not just the technicality aspect to it, but like just layering of different um, things in it mm-hmm. thematically too. And it just kind of goes over s- someone's head. Unless like we end up talking and it's like, yeah, that, that picture's pretty sick. Like he has a picture of the... Uh, the Mona Lisa. Oh, I can't yeah. tell you why it's a. It's. A, I've seen a million pictures of the Mona Lisa. Why is that picture dope? I don't know. Yeah. There's a feeling in it. Yeah. And I think that, in the end, that's what it boils down for me. Flash, man. Pro- provide your perspective in under two minutes. Okay. <laughs> 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 to, uh, to stack up what these guys said, it's pretty much. I feel the same way. Uh, f- um, but in a little way, I think. Uh, your people that are chasing cloud are chasing the fame almost every photographer wants to be somewhat like you yeah. know known it's yeah. not like you're no one wants to be un, uh, the unknown photographer that's insane like mm. what the, unless you're doing it personally for yourself which I haven't really seen in my lifetime uh, some uh, photographers want to be known in some way yeah. so it's just to what extent you want to take it to mm. and how far you want to take it to mm. and like Strick said what are you going to put your, and you keep putting yourself in situation I think you or Strick said you're going to keep putting yourself in that same situation um, just to get 
get that same photo and then just so that you can get the same uh, reaction from people and such like that I'm like okay that's fine and then where do you go from there because you're you're stagnant now and you're not even fresh material <laughs> like, big ups to, uh, to Dusty here it's every photo that I've seen him since I've started um f- um, um f- refollowing him mm-hmm. again has been progressively better yeah like and there's yeah. and there's challenges like to a points where I'm like how the heck did he do that yeah. so, like there's this one where he has like it's um, it's like a almost like a layered picture of a yeah. fo- of a portrait and the guy it's like a forest yeah. and then the forest is angled in a different way where his actually covers his eye or wow. goes into his eye yeah. and I'm like okay I don't know what's going on here anymore this guy's taking it to a new level I haven't seen this that's before. awesome but we are challenging yourself yes. yeah but so clout chasers that's fine you can do what you want yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore it's a lifestyle man. Yeah. at the end of the day like, it is it is <laughs> no, it's a lifestyle too yes yeah. clout chasing is a lifestyle <laughs> yeah. yeah no but I'm glad that you guys like push each other man like and that's the great thing about these photo walks that you guys do or this com- camaraderie that I'm seeing is that you guys obviously you know encourage each other to keep going you guys have this support group like I think that makes it a lot easier because yeah. you know sometimes you know as much as you know people don't want to chase the clout there is like that little high that you get when you get like a bunch of likes on something or when someone's like yo that work is awesome like i think i want to buy it from you like there is a high associated with that because you're like oh my god like i've been doing this for so long i can't believe people want to buy into it yeah recognize it so you know kudos to all three of you guys for putting yourselves out there i think i was saying offline like i think we can probably do a part two so we'll probably look to do a part two about this in 2020 but um quick round table if anybody wants to connect with you guys i'm assuming you guys are going to push your websites and your ig probably makes the most sense so they can actually see your photos we'll include that in the podcasting bio but flash if anyone wants to reach out to you what's the best way to connect ig it's flash.richards that's pretty much it you can talk to me through there DM website website it's on the mo- it's I had to take it down for a second oh, okay <laughs> <to> rejig it <laughs> alright alright so, so 2020 that website drop it's making us all wait resolutions Dusty yeah. Uh, yeah just on uh, Instagram on uh, Dusty Loops uh, D-U-S-T-Y L-O-O-P-S uh, website is dustyloops.ca it's on the Instagram too uh, the other thing is uh we should probably say it. So we're working on a book. Oh, so this guy, wow. wow. Announcement. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so me and Flash, we're working on a book. Nice. And I want to put this out because, yeah. first of all, like I'm uh, thankful for having us on here, right? Yeah, yeah. But my main objective when you said, like, hey, we want to do this photography thing was, was I, I was really happy that you, you wanted to include these guys because I'm trying to get these guys more out there. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it took a little push even to get him to get his photos printed and yeah. stuff. But he also, you know, that was the first time him with the whole printing process, learning that. Sweet, man. And Flash almost had it, but, like, he had something come <laughs> up last minute. It's coming. Right? There'll be more opportunities next It'll year. Work, yes. Yeah. And Strick got a book coming out, too. Oh, okay. yeah, we're, wow. We're gonna, so uh, n- next year will be a big year for right, everyone. Guys. I also got a book coming out next year. Oh, okay. No, I don't. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. But uh, See, yeah, that's the point of you. Straight book on Uh Strict, Strict, promote yourself quickly. Yeah, buystrictdistill.com and buystrictdistill on Instagram. Awesome. If you want to connect with me, it's na- at navnan1 on Instagram, at nnan1 on Twitter. If you want to connect with New Theory Radio, it's at New Theory Radio on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can please connect with our resident photographer as well. I'm a nanwa at colorblind photography underscore on Instagram. Yeah. And he is the wizard behind all of our photos. Uh, quick programming update. Next week, we got uh, Raheel and James from the Wet Beak Podcast. They're going to be joining us here live in the studio. And in the week after that, on the 29th, we have the special year-end edition of New 3 Radio. We're going to have surprise guests. We might actually make it some type of a mixer. I'm getting uh, faded out by Jyothi right now, so we're going to end the show. Actually, did I did I out-talk my theme song? I think I did. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. You will hear all of us next time. Peace. No radio? No problem. Stream us live on saga960am.ca.